Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to our 90 stories for 90 years. If this is your first time joining us, we are celebrating 90 years of Fraternity and Story Life being on campus at DePaul. And we are so excited to celebrate this milestone with hearing students, alumni, faculty, staff experiences with FSL at DePaul. So I'm really excited to have Eric Bays um, with us today. He is a founding member of the Pi Kappa Phi chapter at DePaul. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so Eric, can you um, introduce yourself? For sure. Thanks, Natalie, for having me. I'm really excited for this. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Eric Bays. Um, I am the founding father of our Pi Kappa Phi chapter here at DePaul University. Um, I'm originally from Austin, Texas. Um, lived there for the majority of my life. Moved to Chicago to attend uh, the DePaul University and um, found the Pi Kappa Phi chapter there. And so, you know, was really excited to get that started. Um, so to kind of start us off, why did you choose to come to DePaul from Austin, Texas? Yeah, so um, I always joke because, um, you know, Texas is really hot. So rather than, <laughs> um, you know, staying in extreme heat, I decided to go to extreme cold, which was very unique for me. But um, my entire life, everyone in my family had always gone to the University of Texas or some school in Texas. And um, what I really saw was that people who stayed in Texas kind of got stuck there. and um, I'd always been challenged by, you know, my grandfather, who I really looked up to, to, you know, push myself and do something, you know, more with than just settle for what everybody else has done. And so um, got a brochure for DePaul University in the mail and, you know, I decided to apply on a whim. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really think anything of it. Got my acceptance letter back with, with a nice scholarship package. And so my mom and I decided we would fly up and try it out. And um, it was funny because when we got to Chicago, my aunt lives there and they actually, which sounds kind of crazy, they blindfolded me and drove me straight to campus <laughs> for the campus tour because my aunt has said, it's so easy to fall in love with Chicago, but it's more important for you to fall in love with the mm. Paul. And um, it was crazy because it, it's exactly true. I fell in love with the campus, the, the tour, being able to go and ride the L from our Lincoln Park campus to downtown. Mm. And um, I was just captivated by all the opportunities that were going to be available to me. And so um, we got back on the plane to head back to Austin. And my mom looked at me and she was like, you've made up your mind. And I was like, 100%. <laughs> so, and that's how I ended up at DePaul. That's awesome. What is your like favorite part of campus? Oh, favorite part of campus. Well, I, I think I'm a little biased. Um, I worked at the, um, the Ray for oh, yeah. three of the four years that I was in campus. And um, so, you know, kind of worked my way up from being an interest attendant, scanning people's IDs to being a building manager. And so um, a little biased to, to that place just because mm -hmm. it kind of became a home and a family mm -hmm. for me while I was on um, on campus. That's awesome. And I feel like there's so many like student workers at the Ray. I feel like they like really make the Ray run. Um, I think that's a really cool like student worker opportunity. Definitely. You get to meet a bunch of really cool people, not just that you work with, but some of the patrons that come in because... Mm -hmm. They're not just DePaul students, they're community members, which is another yeah. thing I really loved about DePaul was that building community aspect. So you mentioned in your introduction that you are a founding member of Pi Kappa Phi at DePaul. So tell us what that experience was like to you know, found a chapter at DePaul, which is pretty unique. Definitely, definitely. So I actually, being completely transparent, was never into the idea of joining Greek life. I was one of those students who very much thought it wasn't for me that um, the experience was for a different type of person. And so um, I didn't even consider Greek life in my first two years of undergrad. Uh, it wasn't until junior year while I was living in an on-campus apartment that I got a text message from one of the leadership consultants that was coming to start our chapter, Colton Robbins. Um, his, my name had been passed along by a couple of uh, Delta Gammas that I knew. And so he had asked if I would just meet with him for 30 minutes and talk about starting a chapter of Pi Kappa Phi. I was actually living with three sorority girls at the time. Uh, and so walked into our living room and talked to them a little bit about it. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to go. It's not really for me. And they pushed me. They were like, oh, it never hurts just to sit down and have a conversation mm -hmm. with somebody. You, you could be surprised. So I uh, met Colton uh, in the student center and the, the atrium. And we sat down and talked about PiCap. He gave me the, the typical fraternity spiel with the videos and the cool rushing and things mm -hmm. like that. And and I was, I was interested, definitely. And he was, I mean, he told me after that, you know, take a week, let's meet back. And I have one more presentation I want to give you. And so spent that week uh, talking to parents, mentors, you know, asking that this is something that I should really pursue. 
and met with Colton the following Sunday in the same place. And he showed me the uh, the ability experience video and talked to me about the the legacy that I can leave philanthropically on my campus of being able to start a chapter and start a philanthropy chapter at the uh, at DePaul University and um, you know do something to better the community and the disability community. And so that really captivated me and it sold me on this experience that I was really going to get to start something and really grow it into a unique program that other people are going to get to join and discover their love for philanthropy and their love for fraternity, just like I did. Yeah. And I know you've continued um, your PICAP journey after graduation. So tell us what you've been up to since uh, leaving DePaul. Yes. So uh, joining the fraternity definitely took a little bit of a career change. So I did some really cool internships uh, in my career at DePaul, uh, working for a tech company and then going to work for PepsiCo. Um, was actually planning on going to work for PepsiCo after um, after graduation, but really fell in love with the ability experience as I was a founding philanthropy chair of it. Um, you know, I have a really strong connection to somebody who I grew up with who has a disability. And so um, it kind of changed my whole perspective on fraternity and really changed my career path and looking at there's more to jumping into a career than just going and accepting a job because of the money and the benefits and things mm -hmm. like that. But there was this unique opportunity for me to jump on board a philanthropic organization that supports organizations across the country with people with disabilities. And so um, the regional director at the time that I was actually working with as a philanthropy chair was planning on leaving. And so him and I had talked about it. I did a very short call with our CEO from his Prius because his phone wouldn't connect to his normal Bluetooth <laughs> headphones. And um, right before I did our ability camp in Guatemala, I got the offer to come work for the ability experience. And so uh, definitely a bit of a career change for me, mm -hmm. but I really discovered my love for philanthropy and the, the things that an organization can do and just the values behind not only the ability experience, but PICAP really led me there. Yeah. And so you, you know, as you, you mentioned, um, you were the first philanthropy chair for um, the DePaul chapter. So what lessons did you like learn um, in that role and maybe talk about what was the most challenging but also rewarding part of being a leader within fraternity and sorority life. Yes. Yeah, so being a philanthropy chair is definitely um, a hard position to have. And I'm sure any other philanthropy chair mm -hmm. of any other organization can attest to this. You know, with your executive council, you you have your individual components that kind of help run the chapter. Whereas philanthropy, I feel like, is almost kind of its own mini executive position. You have to manage your own budget. You have to do your PR and marketing. You have to um, hone in on on building a campaign for your philanthropic organization that you're trying to support. Um, I think the biggest challenge is, especially as a newer chapter, going and bringing your organization to other Greek life organizations and just other organizations on the DePaul campus and educating them on what your, your organization does, why it's important, um, and then challenging them to participate in your events. Um, it's also really hard as a philanthropy chair, you, you see all these other chapters on campus um, who do these big events and they raise a ton of money. Um, and what I really discovered in my position is that there's a really strong connection between philanthropy, which is the fundraising side of it, and then service. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to put on an event that tackles both of those equally. If you're having a, a philanthropy event and it's primarily fundraising focused, but you turn around and you don't know exactly where the, the fundraising is going or how it's impacting people, it's not as effective as you being able to kind of hone in on both of those areas and provide that awareness opportunity. And so I think that was definitely a challenge getting started because obviously you want to put on these really big successful events. Um, but I had to challenge myself in my first, you know, two quarters of being the philanthropy mm -hmm. chair to look at it from a perspective of, yes, I can put on a successful fundraiser, but what can I do to educate the DePaul community on our disability community and get them involved in local, uh, local volunteer partnerships like um, Envision, which is one that we partnered with and mm -hmm. their bike, the drive program and, um, you know, getting them to come and volunteer with us and, and do things like that. Well, um, can you kind of talk about some of the like philanthropy and community service events that you did like host um, during your time at DePaul? Because I do remember some of them happening like right in the atrium. And I think they were like really cool and unique. So could you, um, you know, share some of those, um, you know, big events? 
Definitely. So um, one of the big events that, that I had heard of, so every every uh, January, the Executive Council of PICAP goes to PICAP College for Chapter Officers, where we're able to meet and engage with other people in our position from across the country. And so I have this chicken scratch journal coming back from that <laughs> of all of these different ideas that we could do philanthropically. Um, some of my favorite ones that we were able to do was our um, our bikeathon. So, mm-hmm. like Natalie said, we were able to set up in the the atrium of the student center. We had stationary bikes, and um, mm-hmm. it was pretty entertaining to walk by and see you know fraternity guys hopping and puffing on a bike. Um, what was really cool about that program was that we were able to take it and adapt it year over year. And so, the very first year when I did it, um, we were only able to have one stationary bike. That was all we could we could kind of put together at the moment, and it's really evolved into this thing where now we have three or four bikes. We have different sororities and different fraternities hopping on a bike with us and, and getting that and kind of engagement. Um, some of the other volunteer opportunities, um, definitely our buddy biking program with Envision. So getting out on the 606 trail and inviting different people to go in tandem bike with people with disabilities. Um, not many people going to college really think of those kind of opportunities when it, when it comes to college. Um, so it was really cool to be able to present some of those. Um, another personal favorite was our, our War of the Roses competition. Um, I think it's really cool when you can bring a community together and you kind of have a bunch of different competitions that people can compete in and you get to see where um, different organizations have different strategies, how they're going to tackle the week and the different events and things like that. And it's just a fun overall um, organization to coordinate things for. And you've kind of talked about a few different individuals that have like helped you along the way, whether that was in like philanthropy or joining PICAP um, or, you know, when you are, when you were like an FSL leader. So who was like a mentor and advisor that really made an impact on your experience and why? That's a, that's a great question. (laughs) So actually um, giving a shout out to one of my chapter brothers, Robert Davis, I think, you know, while he was a year younger than me, he was a huge mentor and role model for me and just the way that he was able to keep himself level-headed and grounded. And definitely as a philanthropy chair, not only that, but a founding father of a chapter, you have a lot of stuff that's getting thrown thrown at you from Mm -hmm. the national organization, from DePaul. You have to put together this entire chartering packet to be able to present and then become an official chapter. And there's an immense amount of pressure and certain requirements that we had to meet in philanthropy with fundraising and service and volunteering. And, um, you know, he was always kind of that advisor to me. I was able to sit down with him and map out a lot of the ideas and run things by him. He gave me honest feedback. And I think it made me a, not only a great philanthropy chair, but I think it turned me into a better person. And what's been really cool is I've gotten to instill a lot of that wisdom into the chapters that I work with now working for the ability experience in those philanthropy chairs. Um, They come to me with text messages and emails and phone calls, um, trying to tackle a lot of the same things that I had to do when I was a philanthropy chair. And so, you know, I think back to a lot of the advice that Rob gave me and um, I'm able to, you know, continue to grow in my career with that advice, but also be able to give that to other philanthropy chairs and help them have successful philanthropies on their campus. Yeah, I think that's really cool that you named like a brother, especially a younger brother. Um, because I think a lot of times when someone like, like thinks about like a mentor or advisor, they think of someone like older that's had like a ton of experience. And I think that's really good to think about like, there are those people that are, th- there are those like members in your chapter that can be your mentor, or your resource, like throughout your experience. And we will be interviewing Rob in a couple weeks. Um, and so I think that's like really special too, to still see that like connection that's happening um, today even after graduation. Definitely, and I appreciate him, especially after those long events, letting me crash on his couch for a little <laughs> bit to take, be away from the, the scene and um, yeah. take some time to, to veg. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite value of your organization and why? So I think it, it's interesting with PICAP because PICAPify has their own set of values and then the ability experience has their own that kind of coincide with each other. Um, but I think the the one that really stands out to me from the, the PICAP side is that sense of personal responsibility. Um, I think that really goes into everything that PICAPs do. Um, you know, we we are responsible for, you know, maintaining the reputation of not just, you know, our chapter, but our campus, our national organization, the people that we serve, people with disabilities. I mean, across the country, um, we are able to go and do a bunch of stuff with the disability community. And if you talk to a lot of those organizations, 
they know who PICAP is. And, and, and in some ways we represent those organizations. And so um, what I've really loved about the organization is that one value of personal responsibility. It's mm-hmm. we all have our duty in this world to go and leave it better, whether you're volunteering with a disability organization, you're getting out there and you're, um, you know, volunteering with the American Red Cross or you're going to work at a food pantry. In some way, shape or form, the community can always be improved and, and bettered um, by the, the servant leadership that the organization has. And so um, I've really fallen in love with that kind of concept of servant leadership and personal responsibility and, you know, always striving to make your community better. I think as we kind of like wrap up today, I think, you know, I would, I think we're going to transition into um, talking about really what does brotherhood mean to you? Yeah. So I've been able to experience brotherhood with PICAP in a couple of different ways. So um, love my local chapter. And I think, you know, they were definitely the most accepting. Um, I think one of the reasons why I was very, you know, fearful of joining a fraternity was just kind of being that standout person and not really having that community and, um, what I saw with PICAP is that we were kind of, um, in the nicest way possible, we were kind of the island of misfit toys. We were just a bunch of people who all had different opinions about fraternity mm-hmm. and sororities. And, um, we all kind of came together and created a chapter on our own. And so I think, you know, I, I definitely expanded in my group of friends and, and brothers and, um, brotherhood definitely meant a lot to me on the local level. And I still keep in touch with a lot of them still today. I mean, Robert Davis is one of my best friends. I mean, he, he is somebody who I consistently call, who, you know, we, we catch up all the time. Um, so it taught me that, you know, there's more to fraternity than just, um, you know, paying your dues, attending events, and then graduating. Um, there's, you know, a deeper level there. And then I got to experience that on a national level as well and participating in an, um, a little bike ride that we called Journey of Hope. Um, so after I graduated in 2018, I was able to um, bike from Seattle to Washington, D.C. with the Ability Experience. And um, found found that national brotherhood aspect, which I feel like a lot of chapters don't really get if you're not a member who, you know, goes to national conferences or goes to work for your national organization. Um, so it was cool to see brotherhood work in different ways and that we were all connected in this one underlying, you know, unity of being a pie cap and being able to share in that and learn about different chapters and their experiences. Um, so it, it's been really cool to, you know, experience brotherhood and a way that, you know, as a sophomore going into junior year, never thought I would have experienced. Yeah, I think it was funny when you said uh, we were just kind of a, like a lot of like misfit toys. Um, but I also think like, especially fraternities and sororities that everyone brings a different perspective and there's this like strong sense of being your authentic self. I think those are the strongest chapters at the end of the day because you don't want to be in an organization where everyone's the same. Like you're usually looking to join an organization so you can find people that have different views than you can have those conversations. Um, Cause I feel like organizations can become pretty boring if everyone is the same. So I think the misfit toys is a good thing. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a stereotype and in, in all honesty that that was really shattered when I joined PICAP and then especially mm-hmm. got into work with a lot of the other Greek organizations um, on DePaul's campus is that everyone was so unique and everybody was so diverse. And I think that was so different than, the cookie cutter ways that you see fraternity and sorority life played in the media. I mean, mm-hmm. um, where you where you hear about quotas and things like that, it, it wasn't anything like that when you know I joined and met all these other different organizations and got to work with them. It was really cool to see the diversity in in DePaul's Greek life. So, what is your best advice for someone who's interested in joining our FSL community at DePaul? My best piece of advice is trust the process. Um, I think the same advice that I was given in deciding whether or not just to go and have one conversation with somebody, don't don't be closed off to having those conversations. It could change your life. It could change your career path. Um, I never would have thought two years ago that I'd be working for a nonprofit, especially a nonprofit associated with a fraternity, but I wouldn't trade any of it for the world. Um, you know, have those conversations, ask questions, don't be afraid and don't don't fall into the perception of fraternity and sorority life. Fall in and kind of dive in head first and just experience it for what it is because it's really beautiful. So in closing, what was your favorite memory of being in your organization? I think, oh, that, that's a hard one because there's a couple. You can, you can have more than one. There, okay. <laughs> we we, so, we can do two, three, four, five. How many are you winning you want? 
So I think um, definitely one of my favorites was the uh, Brotherhood retreat that we did in Cadillac, Michigan, which I never thought I would go to Cadillac, Michigan. Um, and we all went canoeing. And I think the funniest thing was my um, my brother Anthony and I decided we're we're going to keep it safe. We're going to go with a kayak, and everybody else got canoes. And by the end, we were the only ones that hadn't fallen in. Um, well, I mean, we did dead at the very end, but everybody was falling in because nobody really knows how to canoe. <laughs> so it was interesting to see um, how different people were reacting to going down a very cold river in March. <laughs> um, I think I think the other one is just always a fun one. I look back on pictures and I have them framed from all over the place. But um, when we would do pie a pie cap and just seeing everybody <laughs> with trash bags on them and getting shaving cream with um, with those little tin cans that pies go in. Um, those are just some of the, like, the fun memories of a bunch of people coming together laughing and doing something a little bit silly um, to take their mind off of, you know, school, their their own things that they had going on, and, um, again, building that community. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's always, like, funny to hear people's, like, random memories. So I think there's a lot of, like, the unplanned ones, the, like, the funny, like, philanthropy uh, events. And so I think they're always, like, fun to look back on. Definitely. Uh, well, that's all we have um, for today, but we have another interview um, coming up tomorrow at 2 p.m. Um, and so come back at 2 p.m. tomorrow to the DePaul for Training Story Life Facebook page and check out our next interview. Uh, yeah, Eric, thank you again. Um, this was great to be able to catch up and see um, what you've been up to since graduating DePaul. Bye, Definitely. everyone. I really appreciate it. Bye. Bye.